Happiness is being in the right place at the right time and being where you should be at that time. Any business, you, you kind of crave something fresh to reignite your passion again. Please welcome Debbie Travis. One day she comes up with this idea and says, wouldn't it be great if I take a group of women somewhere nice and motivate them? I love Tuscany. So I thought, well, what if I invite women from around the world and they come and they share my villa with me? But I didn't have a house. So I was like, oops. I mean, it's a huge commitment that it's going to take most of our savings. We've been told that the property you're looking for doesn't exist. As I think there's people dead in here somewhere. There probably are. I've got a tree in my living room. <laughs> One Friday afternoon, I get a call. It's a friend from Tuscany. She tells me, Hans, there's a property that's kind of on the market that is perfect for you. I'm really excited. Have a look at that. Isn't that something? Now I have to get Debbie's attention. Sure, this is the right it's road. Any second now. Just keep going. I think we're we're somewhere here on this back roads. Because that's Montepulciano Giano up there. It's like we're in the middle of a vineyard. Seeing this property was a little bit like meeting Debbie. I knew it was right. And I just needed to convince Debbie that it was the right one because it wasn't a villa. It was actually a very modest farmhouse. But the location was absolutely magical. We looked at the property together, and I'm watching Debbie's facial expressions. And she hated it. And I was like, I hate it, I hate it. It's just this tumble down mess, <laughs> dull property, pigsties everywhere, this barn which was four legs, farm vehicles everywhere, tired, miserable property. I couldn't see the potential. It was a dark and dingy, oh God, run-down farm that hadn't been touched for centuries. And Hans kept saying, look at the view, look at the view. It was in a beautiful location. It had a view to die for. And it had a secret thing. It had that magic word, volume, which means... It had outbuildings. It had outbuildings that were just barns, but you could use it and convert it. I've worked with so many people in Italy and seen so many houses, and they'll go, oh, you're a decorator, you're a designer, you can do this. Like, some of the properties I saw had no roofs, had <laughs> a forest in the middle of the living room. You know, I'm like, no, no, even I can't do this. So uh, this was no exception. This was just like, I don't get it. If you're not in love with it, it it's going to be a drag. It's an old farmyard now. And yes, but you, you we can, all of that can be changed. So I had a big job ahead trying to convince her that it had the potential, it had the right location, and she could create whatever she wanted with what we had. We came back the next day, and this guy had made this model. The seller was actually very clever. He created a little paper model of the house. This is the model he gave me. Still, it looks a little rustic. But you can see this was the, the villa side. So it, it was three, four floors here. These were pigsties, which just were tumbled down. There were no pigs left in them. But in the end, you know, I could start to imagine what I could do with this. This was the farmyard side, and this was all blocked in. This was an old bathroom. But we managed to imagine what it would look like if we would open up the wall. Like, look at it, it's like, it's like a, it's like a little scruffy old box inside. Um, but it, I started to see it. And because it was 3D, it was like, oh my God, this could be a home. And she's looking at me and I'm like a little kid waiting for approval. And, uh, and bit by bit, I began to smile, and you could see I, I was starting to turn. I told him we're moving ahead. We got a house in Tuscany. <laughs> really? You got a house in Tuscany? Yes, you do. 
It took a bit of convincing, but she finally saw the potential. It's a decision of a lifetime. Yeah, you're not kidding. And if it hadn't been for that model, she might never have been convinced that she could actually make the space work. It's going to take most of our savings. I mean, it's a huge commitment, Eddie. The name of the house now is called Reniella, and we don't know what that means. But originally, um, we were given some documents, and it was called Reginiella, and Reginiella means kingdom. Small kingdom. Small kingdom. So it's Debbie's small kingdom. What needed to be done to it? Everything. Absolutely everything. The roof leaked. The walls were covered inside in a white plaster that was black with a type of mold. The ground floor of the property was still stables. It was empty, but they were stables that hadn't been changed for hundreds and hundreds of years. The pigsties were falling in, they were broken. This barn is just metal legs with an asbestos roof. Thinking that you found the right property and, you're, and that's the end of it is actually just the beginning because you found the property, now you have to turn it into yours. It takes you 10 years to find a property, then you find one, then it takes a year to sign the property, a year. It's about time. <laughs> There's no way we could do this project or even buy a property without an architect, an Italian architect looking at it, because there's so many rules. In this part of the house here, respect to this, there is no need for a lavanderia for not having this corridor long road. Bolko von Schweinigen. I mean, with a name like this, you know, I expect him to have a leather helmet and fly a biplane, not being an Italian architect. Balco, he happens to be the architect, who renovated a fantastic old castle that was renovated in such a way that it didn't look renovated. Ciao, Balco. When you started this project, what was it like? When we arrived here, it was a ruin, to be honest. Oh, my God. I... This is what it looked like? Yeah. You mean the whole castle looked the whole like this? Castle. This is the main courtyard. The plaster of the main building was off. This whole roof was collapsed. We rebuilt it, so it was really in a very, very bad condition. It doesn't look restored, it looks lived in. This is original as well. Absolutely, everything is original here. The brief we gave Bolko was to do a massive conversion of the farmhouse, but to do it in such a way that was also in keeping with the style of the house and the style of the area. Not an easy thing to achieve, particularly if your boss is Debbie Travis. You need somebody with a lot of patience, Debbie. You couldn't work with somebody who's very headstrong. Why, because I'm headstrong? Yes, you'd no, be I'm clashing, not. absolutely, you'd be clashing with that person all the time. Uh, here, I, I have the list that I just received from Debbie of all her wishes uh, regarding the restoration of the house of Reynella. An infinity swimming pool with a technical room and storage for furniture, a vegetable garden, like working with me. I'm very sweet and nice. <laughs> Dolce de oh, sweet. Oh, oh. An open plan living room, kitchen and dining room, all bedrooms en suite with a walk-in closet. He's not going to have plans ready yet. I you know because it's it's our first initial meeting. I think he's going to make some proposals. What I really want to know from him is how long. When are we going to be finished? When can I have the first group of women? For me, that's the most important thing, is time. She wants to have the wow factor when somebody reached the place. I mean, some people may just hand over their life to their architect. For me, you know, I, I knew what I wanted. I think it's really very early now to talk about the vegetable garden, where we still have to define the use of the house. I've prepared a very rough sketch for you where you can see the different use of the rooms. I was thinking to use the pig style as the kitchen and dining room. Yeah. Oh, that would be cool. So you've got the view of the valley. You have the view of the valley and also you have the big sitting room to open it up completely with arches. It was very important to me, not just to have fancy furniture or expensive fittings, but I wanted to be able to reconstruct these bones that were there. When you start a project, on my point of view, is to understand the building and the history of the building. 
so that you have an idea what it was used and how it was built at the beginning, and then to transform it, keeping in mind that the building can't transform too much. It was built from the stone on the land. So it started life as a lookout tower in the 13th century that would protect the village behind it. And that tower then probably fell to ruin over the generations and then somebody must have taken it over and built on and then built on and on and on. What I was thinking is I'd love to do, you know like in the south in Puglia and stuff, they do those flat roofs and then we could have like a lovely kind of wrought iron fence up there and an outside staircase so they can come up and they can sit on the roof and sunbathe. No. If, when you restore this building, you have to keep in mind the tradition of the buildings and the history of the buildings. You will never find in Tuscany a flat roof. It's typical from south of Italy. And very often he would say impossible, but very often he'd say, okay, let's change that, let's try it again, let's go back to the drawing board. And we keep uh, the oven. We keep the oven, where it's, it's something very typical from farmhouses in Tuscany. It's in very, very good conditions. The vault inside in court is still there. So realistically, Boko, how, when do you think we could be finished? When can I have Let's say 17 happy women sitting drinking wine on that terrace? Not less than two years, two years and a half. Oh my God, I might be dead by then. It's a long process. Why so long? I mean, really. That's the time that it takes to transform completely a property like this. The one thing that uh, Miss Impatient didn't prepare herself for is the amount of bureaucracy and the speed with which things move in Italy. There are different officers that are in charge of different permits, and then they need to have their time to go to the commission, to prepare the papers, to send it to the following commission, and so on and so on. So this whole process takes you months. Yes. This house has a lot of history. You can't expect that uh, they give you a permit like this in, in two weeks. You need a permit for everything. And, you know, there is a reason for it. And the reason is this is an incredibly beautiful area. If people could just willy-nilly go and renovate and put in glass boxes and, you know, crazy stuff, it wouldn't any longer be Tuscany. It would be Florida. So it would take some time, quite a long time, and it would be expensive. But <laughs> at the end, I will help you to make your dream reality, but you need to be patient. So I think for us, it's a, it's a learning tool to be calm. So basically saying, don't argue with him. Okay, okay. we trust you. is the most exciting because um, the first thing that happens is they put up a big sign at the front of the property which lists everybody who's working there and the region that you're under. Just getting the permit uh, took over a year and they tell me that is incredibly quick. And then that they brought in a hut where the workers would have lunch. That is a sacred rule. And then they put up a crane. It was massive. It's the kind of thing you'd see in downtown Toronto doing a high-rise. And it's a great way of moving stuff around. I mean, it's gigantic and you can see it from everywhere across the valley, like this Debbie's crane. We're actually renovating three buildings. The villa, which is the main house, the old pigsties and the barn. Then we're going to rebuild these pigsties to make room for six guest rooms, which will have each a bathroom. The barn's going to come down. It'll be redone as a proper building with three guest rooms, three bathrooms, and a beautiful loungy loft space. Major work will also begin on the exterior of the villa. It's going to have a new insulated roof. We're going to reuse the old tiles, new chimneys, and copper gutters. We had to keep 
by law, by the commune, the bureaucrats, you have to keep the roof lines all the same. But in a way, that made us more creative. The villa will eventually house five guest rooms, a semi-professional kitchen, and two more living spaces. In the end, we'll have two kitchens, four living rooms, and 14 guest suites. in North America, I have never worked with people like this. I genuinely like the people that work for us. Some of them are incredible craftsmen and I have a lot of respect for what they do. Raoul is the plumber, but he's the master plumber. Yeah, Raoul doesn't speak any English, but he's this very, like, testosterone guy. And he has a whole team of plumbers doing this. What the, what the, Plumbing is so complicated, I don't know why. Nella cioè, se fa il segno della croce di dire speriamo che tutto quello che abbiamo fatto vada bene, altrimenti tocca prendere e rifare le lavorazioni. E poi si prende il pannellino di due. Riccardo is really what you call the foreman. He's here first in the morning, last to leave. È il puzzetto della corrente, è così. And he's in charge of the team, and plus he's working with them. I have never met anybody like that in my life. So emotivo, timido, so emotivo. Ho il cuore debole. No, debole che non funziona, eh. Però io per qualsiasi cosa me la prendo a cuore, ecco. Se io vedo che te sei dispiaciuto una cosa, mi dispiace. Se vedo che i ragazzi non vanno d'accordo tra di sé, a me dispiace. Perché purtroppo qualche volta anche in cantiere capita che i ragazzi tra di sé che hanno qualche giornata con un e, e mi dispiace. I guess he's my first example of an Italian man. Um, he's emotional and he's not embarrassed to be emotional. And he takes his role as foreman very, very seriously. They're all like that. If you're a plumber or you're a stonemason, that is your life, that is your career. They really believe in their craft and doing it right the bloody better. <laughs> but the most fascinating thing on this land is these. These are called mezzalunas, and a mezzaluna means half moon. So they're a half circle, and these were built to protect the olives. It was a way of farming, and they were built by Napoleon's army. So Napoleon's army marched through here from Rome, or wherever they were, pillaging and stuff, but on their way, they put in olive trees. So these trees are very, very old and they're lovely. Sometimes I'll come down here, just sit quietly and listen to the land and, and stuff. It's very, it's very calming under an olive tree. Very, very still, just very serene. the hardest things going into a battle like this, and it is a battle, with your North American hat on. You know, oh, you get an architect, maybe you get a designer, you get a few, maybe you have a few permits, and then, you know, within a year, you're done. One of the first things we needed to do with the main building was build a massive garage and storage space, somewhere where we can put the laundry, we can keep all the stuff for the retreat and, you know, Hans has stuff, boys' stuff, so I guess somewhere to put all his things. It, it takes a major readjustment to undertake a project of any magnitude in Italy if you're used to getting things done in North America. Tutta bellina, perfetta! Via, via, via! It's nice having dinner with the people that are building your home. It's just a very nice thing. Okay. Uh, 
Debbie e da me, yes. davvero un grande, grande grazie per il passione di edilire uh, del il lavoro, reve, il reve, il reve, il reve, il dream, dream, il sogno, il sogno, il sogno, il sogno da noi. Allora, grazie, saluto. Grazie a voi. I see Hans and honestly he's a different person here. He's a young guy and he loves this land. We've been married nearly 30 years. So either you know each other so well that you do something like this together or you end up hating each other. And uh, I think you have to both be on the same page. Without a doubt, if one of us did not see this vision and did not want to be here, you couldn't do it. We both enjoy what we're doing. We're both very good at it. It works for our relationship. I think it will add 10 years to, to our lives. Um, I want to say, um, uh, my Italian is so good. Bene, bene. Uh, ma casa, tutto always, how do you say always? Always. How do you say? Cote, your casa. Any time come for lunch, pranzo, we swim. She absolutely has to learn the language. So I've been working on Debbie to go and enroll in school, and she said, yes, and I'm going to learn the language. Time will tell what happens there. I mean, I am ashamed that I can't speak any languages, and I'm trying, but I don't know. One day I'll understand. My casa, I say, my casa e your casa. Mia casa, la mia casa. Sì, okay, I'll Tutta la mia casa a pranzo. Sounds so much better in Italian. Tutta casa mia a pranzo. As long as you bring food. So yummy. Hi. This is the first time kind of I'm alone here. Her Italian is so limited. It's a real issue. Again? Same. Cool. I have absolutely no clue what they're saying. We are going to open all the pallets and select each single piece for you. See, everything is off. I've got four bathrooms like this. Yeah, of course I'm really upset.